Hello, my name is John Shuttleworth. Oh, that's not me. Don't know who that is. I was the first one. Where have, oh, yeah, there I am again. And I'd come to London, England, as the caption shows. Not very good shots, these opening ones. Don't know who that little lad is. I've disappeared again. Where am I? Oh, there I am. And I had come to London to test the theory that people are softer in the South. I'm stood here. Let's see if it's true. Say hello, Molly. Molly, say hello. Yep, Molly. as I suspected, a shy, retiring little girl. Hello. Intimidated by the camera. Hello. Oof, no, I was wrong. She's a bit of a hard nut. Hey, follow your mummy. Don't lose your mummy. Yeah. Bye bye. In fact, it's me that seems intimidated. Bye. Oof, she's brazen. And watch what happens now. Oof, goodness me. She might be wearing pink, symbol of femininity and softness. But this southern lass is as hard as they come. And it disproves the theory, almost immediately, that southerners are softies. Well, it's not a bridge. We've been had. It's a blinking facade. Nevertheless, it was necessary to cross the bridge if we were to go further south and truly test the theory of the southern softies. Coming to you now, John! Oh. 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 Hello and welcome to the southern John. south. Oh, I've heard I've my neck. Yeah, sorry, Ken. Sorry. Start again. I've heard my neck, John. Oh. You've hurt your neck? Yeah. Well, you know, it was a bit too ambitious, wasn't it? Oh, well, starting again. Southern folk have ne'er a care Relaxing in the balmy air Making friends with whom to share The news of how wonderful life is Northern folk Hard as nails, fortified by Arctic gales. They know what hard work entails, and they know what a cold and a cough is. But those southern softies. Excuse me, do you think it's softer down south? Are we doing a, a documentary? Oh, no, thank you. No, thank you. Oh. What about the girl with the football? Do you think it's soft down south? What, what's the show you doing? Well, we, we've just started making a feature film um, on Ken's camcorder. Hello! And hopefully it'll end up on DVD. Right. They're lovely, aren't they? Well, it would be, yeah. <coughs> uh, John You're Shuttle. You're not really dressed though, are you? I'm not really, no. I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm a bit warm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In holiday? Yes. So was I, time. John. I oh. say. I'm supposed to be on holiday. It has, yeah. Keeps going the man behind the camera complaining <laughs> is my next door neighbour and sole agent. Not as good as Mablethorpe, though, is it? Oh, oh, talking about Mablethorpe. Have, <laughs> have you? Have yeah, so have I. Yeah. Well, we do, don't we? From Sheffield region. That's right. So I'm from Sheffield. Yeah. That's right. And therefore, That's not a southern yeah. softy. I think this beats it. Are you Canadian? No, no, it's just a. Do you like maple syrup? No. I do, it's wonderful. Mm. Uh, oh, hey, tide's coming in, Ken. <laughs> oh. Come on, we're back to the tree. Yes, we are. So why exactly had we come to Jersey? Because it's the most southerly point of the British Isles. So what better place to test the theory that it's soft down south? If southern softies exist, they should be here in abundance. Sergeant Bergerac used to come out of that tunnel, didn't he? If you don't believe me, look at the map. Well, it was my wife Mary's present, that tea towel. In fact, it should still be in the drawer. I uh, hope she doesn't see that shot. But um, it does show that... Jer oh, keep it still, Ken. Yep. Jersey is the most southerly of the Channel Islands. On first scrutiny, Jersey does appear to be soft. Palm trees, expansive beaches, comfy-looking benches. Oof! He's not soft, look. He's... Uh, oh, no. I um, thought he was going to become aggressive. But he backed down. That cow looks soft. Oof, has she got a nasal irritation? And look at those old boys, living the life of Riley. Southern softies. Oh, 
Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. That's Ken again, behind the camera. Ken Worthington. Wait for th that bloke to go, and then just come out, please. Ken, as I've already stated, is my next door neighbour and sole agent. Ready! And um, here I come. No! You'll have to do it again. That's better. Do it, Ken, I'm just say. Oh, don't say anything, John. You've rubbed. There were teething problems, as you can see. But please don't be too critical, because I'm indebted to Ken for lending me his camcorder to film the documentary. Now, yeah. Yes! Action! Luckily, Ken was coming to Jersey anyway, on a saga holiday. So it worked out quite well. Notice the flamingos are very tightly grouped together. Oh, yes. The sense that they're clinging to each other for security. Hmm. Southern softies. What to me? Oof, he's hard. He's not a southern softy. Oh, spoke too soon. Now then, what's going on here? Well, although she looks fearsome, she's, to all intents and purposes, doing domestic chores and not getting any help from the others. You know, my wife Mary wouldn't stand for that. I suppose they regard that stuff as the duvet. Probably got a tog factor of seven or eight. Would you not say... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, shouldn't laugh, but that reminded me of somebody dressed up in a gorilla suit. Where are you going? Oh, they're all southern softies. Although we can hear his voice. Hello. It's unlikely that we'll be seeing much of Ken. Hello. Be oh, shut up, Ken. Mm -hmm. Because ever since he came last on New Faces... In 73, Ken has fought shy of publicity. But if you imagine that mere cat, um, or that one, with an afro, you'd be close to knowing how Ken Worthington looks. Keep going, John. What's it? When I'm not making documentaries, I'm a versatile singer-organist. And Ken, as my agent, is excellent. Yeah, stop! Stop there, John! Now come back! But, as a documentary cameraman, I soon began to realise that he was rubbish. Looks good, John. Yes, all right. Yeah, looks really good. And soon it became abundantly clear that Ken was on a different kind of quest. Whoa. To be fair to Ken, he's not an happily married man like myself. He's a bachelor. And, you know, he was on his holidays. Uh, but oh, I needed a committed cameraman, not somebody who was just going to ogle ladies on the beach. To me, love. To me. Oh. Will you marry me? Please. Oh. Right, I'm going back to my hotel, John. I want to sit by my pool. Well, you can, Ken. Relax. Once we've finished the quest, oh. to see whether people get softer the further south you travel. John, there's no point. It's a silly quest. It's not, Ken. It's very simple. Oh, they don't right. They've got a bob or two. Oh. Right, John. I'll see you later. I want to splash on some high karate. One, two, three, hop. And I have to say, this is how the film would have ended if I hadn't taken drastic action. I'd always wanted my own camcorder, but Mary had said no. But Mary wasn't here. And it was an essential purchase if the investigation was to continue. For God's sake. Yeah? Yes, please. Just wrap it up then for you, yeah? Yep, thank you very much. But you know, making a documentary on your own isn't easy. Even the telescope near the lighthouse has got an eyepiece that is soft rubber. Well, I'll do that again. The wind's getting up, causing it to fall over. 
Tunnel School, <coughs> near the lighthouse, as you can see in the background, it's got soft rubber. You know, in the north, that would be hard rubber, wouldn't it? Because they're harder up north. In the south, southern softies, it's a soft rub rubber. It's not a soft rubber. It's a hard rubber. It's like a baker light. As dusk descended, uh, I took a stroll along the beach, open to spot Ken at the Champagne Bar. But all I saw were the bright young things of St Helier, Jersey's capital, talking animatedly. Oof, he's not. Seems a bit down. Oh, no, he's, he's all right. Hang on, that's Dale Winton, isn't it? And that other lad off the telly. Steve, what's it? Or is it? Oh, that's um, a holder I was hoping to buy. My grandniece Michaela. It was a bit too pricey. Last shot of the day, that. Apart from this one, of my B&B. Uh, it was alright, but there was no sachet of hot chocolate. A bit disappointed. Hello. Hello, John Shuttleworth. Hello, John. How are you yeah, doing? Man, eh? All right. I thought it was it true. Internationally renowned photographer Martin Parr was in Jersey. Yeah, I've got a bone to pick with you. Do you recognise Martin? Chances are you don't. Because even though he's an internationally renowned photographer, he doesn't do weddings, he hasn't got a shop, but he was a cameraman on a previous documentary of mine called It's Nice Up North, set in the Shetland Isles. OK, and walk out. As for picking bones, I was the one with the genuine grievance. Throughout the filming, Martin had behaved shoddily. He was a bully, and not averse to making me look foolish. And considering he was a stills photographer, Martin's camera work often had rather too much movement. Oof. What do you say then? You're shivering. Are you not, uh, you're not keen to go to you, are no, you? Not, not tonight. Let's go tomorrow. It's, it's cold. <laughs> Look. You know, he's a southern softy. That's what he is. And sadly, Martin, it seems, was still a southern softy. Softy, there you go. Right, what? And start filming, right? Come on. Why would, I, why would I do that? I'm on holiday. Look. But Martin did not want the job of cameraman, and I was secretly relieved. Yeah, I'll do one of you. Go on, then. Though happy for him to take me picture. After all, he is internationally renowned. The lens cap didn't, didn't open. Did it? it? No. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, well spotted, thank you. I seem to remember you had made the same mistake. Well, he's got that one right. And Chatlin. Is it? Yeah, it's open now. Have you learned nothing? Well, in the, in you the know. four years since we, we last met? No, he hasn't. Look at that. Rubbish. Very unflattering to me. And he somehow managed to make that building look crooked. How's he done that? And that one would be nice, but it's on its side. And I can't turn it round, you know. And that one has uh, chopped my head off. Why would I want to work with Martin again? Well, I was desperate. Is that your first one? Or you there you go. Feel? There's you. Is that wobbly or what? That's a pretty steady man tomorrow, isn't it? Cheers. We got straight to work, and I felt it struck gold with our first interviewee, a heavily tattooed local man and his fearsome-looking dog. That's my good side. That's my bad side. Is it? Well, we all have a good side and a bad side. Yeah. So basically, we are all technically split in half. That's my good, that's my bad. I see. He was no southern softy. He was a man of wisdom, who seemed at the point of telling me the meaning of life. So why did Martin choose that moment to pan away? What was wrong with him? Then he started doing hearty shots. Like that. Ugh. And then Martin lost it completely. 
I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I really am sorry. And then, disaster. And well, what's happened, Tom? Glasses are broken off, they snapped. How can this break? The shop's all down. I might have the hundred, sir, in this, which oh, is a more powerful... for a boat, and... You, you wanted a greater power, did you? No, I think we may... Trouble is, although it was an emergency, I had to wait my turn. Sorry, I'm in the way. Yes, I see. Sorry, I'm on my own. I'm oh, you, you yeah, you're there, I don't know what to do, because they're both quite pricey. They are. I don't know, they are. prices you're, are more in Jersey, aren't they? Well, this one here... Uh, that's the ordinary super glue, thin super glue. It'll say on there most plastics, but yeah. I can't guarantee all plastics. See, the problem is it's a very small mating surface, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it is. Ooh. Time is of the essence, Martin. You know, we've got lots of uh, interviews to, to gather. I think you but need longer, the, longer bit than that. What do you know about DIY? And then I was going to loop that round. My jibe was misplaced, for Martin proceeded to repair my spectacles. This will keep you going until maybe you're back in Sheffield. Well, that's not going to be for a few days, Martin. Oh, isn't it? Oh, no. I'm... But just as I was beginning to warm to Martin... Right, so look, I think, I think that's all right. Have a look. ...and to tolerate him as the documentary's new cameraman, he dropped a bombshell. Well, I can't really, because I've got to go this day. He's um, going to a literature festival uh, this evening. Whereabouts? With my wife. Where? In uh, Port Elliot. Where's that? Cornwall. Cornwall? Yes. Despite this cruel snub, I thought it wise to part on good terms. Have a word this original. Oh, there you are. Well, thank you. You're welcome. See you later. OK. Bye. Right. Oh, she's my ca oh, look Sorry. It's my camera mount. OK. Yeah. Bye, then. OK. Well, I'll, I'll go, then. Yeah. You go to your literature festival, Martin. All right, yeah, I will. Yeah. All right, Bye. Bye. Martin had lent me two pounds to buy the sticky tape, and his generosity had given me an idea. Excuse me, would you be interested in, in investing in a film? I'm making a film about the Channel Islands. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm looking for investors. Investors? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, you haven't got a bubble or two? Oh, I haven't. I'm an old age pensioner. Uh, I've just got to get my... Own. Thank you. Undeterred by that brush off, I decided it was time for some serious self promotion. Don't be. Oh, sorry, start again. Don't. Don't let your money fester. Become a movie investor. Don't be Southern softest folks. Get out your coins and notes. Jersey is a centre of international finance. The place must be full of canny investors eager to take a punt. A little bit higher. Don't, don't let your money fester. Become a movie investor. Don't be Southern softest folks. Get out your coins and notes. Despite a key change, business remained disappointingly slow. Oof, I'm going to drop my organ there. Come on, roll up and invest in a film <coughs> that's set in the Channel Islands, provisionally titled Southern Softies. Would you like to invest in a film, sir, madam? <sighs> no, not very much luck at all. And then I persuaded a tourist to film me to give the campaign extra impact. Don't be southern softest folks, get out your coins and notes. By now the song was well honed, and it looked like all my hard work was about to pay off. See that bloke? Oh, point the camera at him. His interested look. Uh, oh. Meanwhile, a certain other person had no intention of going home. Let's see if there's any nice ladies out there. No. This is an extract from Ken Worthington's video diary. You must be um, preparing for the line dance. Yep. Only had access to this footage <laughs> recently. Some sand on there. And it shows Ken's distinctive afro. He's got a bit of string in his hair. Did you notice that? Oh! Oh! oh. 
Well, she can. She's young enough to be a granddaughter. What's she doing with him? Well, yeah, Ken has a point there. Yeah, that's more Ken's age group. But I don't know why he's still ogling the ladies. Ken, it seems, was spoken for. Ken, can I get you an orange juice? Oh, yes, please, Audrey. And uh, give me some bran flakes, love. I may have been down on my luck, but it's evident from his video diary that Ken was leading a life that most of us can only dream about. But why is he having his cooked breakfast before his bran flakes? Oof, blimey. Isn't that beautiful, Audrey? Oh, it is, Ken, yes. Hey, Ken's doing some courting with Audrey. Did Douglas leave you very well provided for? Extremely so, yes. Of course, I'm not without means myself. I'm a successful sole agent. He is, yes. Besides me, Ken's impressive rostrum includes Janet LaRoe and Sammy Martini. Come on, Audrey. Let's go to the beach and have a skinny dip. Oh, Ken, what do you like? Yes, and what was he up to? Yes, I will, love. Sell that camera and buy a ticket for the yes, next period. Yes, I will. Right, well, as soon as I can. How long have I been waiting for those curtains? Oh, is that funny noise, Mary? Hang on. Oh, it's Ken, love. Saying switch caller. I won't bother, though. It's been a bit rude. No, you talk to him, Tom. I've got a new bin lining to put on. Oh, all right, then, Yeah. Speak to you later. Bye. Ken, what do you want? Hello, John. Are you still angry with me? Well, yes, I am, actually. No, but... I've finally found full finance for your film. Oh, Ooh, sounds like a tongue twister. But, uh, That's fantastic. Yes, I thought you'd be pleased. The film crew has been assembled, and as we speak, a jersey bound. Oh, brilliant news. Professional. You know, they got a tripod. Oh, uh, actually, well, I don't really want it now. What do you mean, John? Do I have to pay for it? Hey, it's free. It's paid for, well, John. Sorry, Ken, hang on. Uh, it's, no, I will have it, because it's really frothy. How much is it? John! I'll pay now or after this. You may recognise Tim as the sound man from It's Nice Up North. He had a dash back then, I see. And hiding behind him is this man, Stuart Tom. Still hiding, it seems. Stuart! From the Midlands? Yep, he's from the Midlands. And therefore, you could argue, not quite as soft as somebody from the South, which Tim is. But let's not anticipate the findings of the investigation, which was back on, by the way. Uh, obviously, you're on sound with your furry thing. Tim, uh, you're Tim. Yeah, Stuart, you must be doing the camera. Yeah. Well, no, but no, actually, we don't have a cameraman as such. Oh, Ken had forgotten to hire the most vital member of the crew. Or had he? Tim? Let's hope you approve. To be honest, I didn't know what to think, especially when I saw it was a lady. Hi. Who are you? I'm Faye. She was better looking than Martin Parr, certainly. But would this mere slip of a lass be up to the task of operating my new camcorder? Thanks. Oh, I see. Reunited with my Austin ambassador Y Wrench, I soon warmed to the leather clad beauty known only as Faye. A graduate of Bournemouth Film School, and oh, doesn't it just show? Beautiful shot. Well, beautiful car. Oof, a little bit wobbly there, Faye. Please don't be like Martin Parr. Good old Ken. Thanks to him, we were back in business and the search for the Southern Softies could resume in earnest. We even had walkie-talkies so that Faye could communicate with me and tell me the next manoeuvre. Which is to overtake. Here I come.
Oh, look at this. Fantastic. Hello. Very friendly. Very soft. <coughs> Let's see if the peaches are soft. What do you prefer, Faye? The nectarine or the peach? Definitely a nectarine. Really? Definitely. They've gradually taken over, haven't they? In the, the public consciousness. Peaches, one -time are, peaches pe are too furry. Well, I disagree. I've come back in favour of the peach. For a couple of years, I was with the nectarine. Uh, but no, it's, the peach does it for me now every time. It is a dilemma. Feel a bit foolish buying a single peach. So normally I go to the market with Mary, laden with bags, you know, all the fruit and veg for, for the week. This is what like a, a young student would buy, isn't it? Who lives in digs. You don't seem that soft to me. Oh, I am. It's quite difficult to ne very, negotiate very the, the price down. Oh, no, you saw a week in, didn't you? Well, you did. So you don't think uh, northerners are uh, as soft as southerners? You think there is a difference, do we? I really don't know. Do you care? No, Hello, you're all right. I think it's soft down south. Are you from the south? No. Are you, you twins? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were. And you're not related to them, are you? So but you're their friend. They're from Germany. They're German. from Germany. <laughs> Sprechen Sie uh, Deutsch? Yeah. <laughs> so, what, you, you've been shopping, have you? Yeah, I've got a hairbrush. Have you? Just had a bunch of new clothes on there. Nothing Tim, you've knocked the strawberries over. <laughs> Can't believe it. We're going to have to meet a hasty retreat. Well, it's lovely to meet you, girls. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. No. Nice to meet you. Oh, you've got very wet hands. <laughs> oh, dear. It's all right. Oof. We're going to have to pay for these, you know. Oof. That lady won't be so soft once she finds out what's happened. Are the southern softies? You know what I mean? No. You see, I'm from the north, and uh, we've got a strong tradition in rugby, haven't we? Where are Jersey in the league? Jersey play in uh, in London, two south, and uh, pretty tough league. Do they? Yeah. 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 As you can see, they're all pretty fit guys. They do seem very fit. No, I just wondered uh, what the the muscle to uh, body fat ratio was of the southern players compared to, to northerners. Excuse me. Do you think it's soft down south? What? Do you think it's soft down south? Are you from Jersey? Yeah. 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 No one making a documentary. See yeah. whether people get softer the further south you go. Yeah, yeah, it's true enough. Oh. This place is very soft. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Do you admit it then? Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Because you, yeah, you see them, the weather's nice down there and everything. And it's quite soft here as well. Oh, yeah. This yeah. is the south, see? Yeah, but well, this is the south as well. This is the most southerly, southerly, southerly part yeah, yeah, no, quite of the British Isles. Yeah, well, you look at the men. They all do their eyebrows and things. What you see me do now is a professional technique Tattoo. called a noddy. Something that Faye encouraged me to do. <coughs> Helps make it look more professional. Well, it's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to publish your name. John Shuttleworth. Nice to meet you, Tom. I'm Derek. Derek, it's been a pleasure, but remember... It's a very hard name, Derek. Do you think so? Well, See, John's quite a girly name. And used again there to show that I'm slightly offended. No, I think I'm not going to argue with you. Sure, <laughs> you're a big lad. You're not a southern soft, you're a hard northern. Yeah. Lovely to meet you. Be hard, be a northern. Yeah. But you shouldn't be smoking, Derek, you know Why? Why? You'll smoke more. <laughs> really? Smoke. The more of a cigarette has got, the more you should smoke. See? Why is that? Because if you everybody... Want to die. If the white man's smoking, ban cigarettes. I like to die. Everybody's got to die. And if I die smoking, I'm happy. And drinking. See? You're a big drinker. No, but I like to drink straight vodka. Yeah. Hard, see? None of this southern comfort. Derek's right, of course. Everybody does have to die. But, you know, we know that. Why did he have to remind me? Upset me, him saying that.
quite keen to be off. Oh, yeah. Will you miss them? Pardon? Will you miss them? While they're gone? Oh, well, they'd be home now. Really? Yeah. Where's, where's home? About three miles away. Pigeons in flight. I want to see you tonight. I want to hold you, if I may be so bold to, <laughs> and tell you some things that you'd like. Boys. <laughs> Do you not like it? There's a, there's a little bit more. Did you like to hear, oh my dear, in your ear? Lots of rhymes with oh, right. di- pigeons in flight. I want to see you tonight. You wrote that. I did. I oh, wrote it well, on my own. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Sometimes I, I, I write songs with somebody called Ray. Ah, right. Don't you won't know? He does country. Mm. I go round to his house. We have a <coughs> glass of lager. Yeah. And we sit. He's, he's got um, a ukulele. Oh, and I've got an organ. Yeah. We sit. He picks out little melodies, and I give him the backing. Yeah. I give him the musical structure. All oh, right. Well, and good. then we write songs. Yeah. Well, we haven't mm. written any yet, really. That we finished. That we're happy with. But he's more country, yeah. and I'm more uh, rock, rock orientated. Yeah. That's nice. Well, they've gone that way, haven't they? These, this <laughs> lot. They've gone straight out to sea. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, Stuart nearly fell over there. <laughs> It would probably um, might use one or two bits of this, if that's OK with you, in the um, film we're making. Oh, if you're right. quite happy with that, could I have your name, address and a signature? As with all interviewees, Stuart was obliged to obtain certain details from the gentleman to enable us to use the footage. The investigation was proceeding well, without any hiccups and in a business-like fashion. But for some reason, I wasn't that bothered anymore about the search for the Southern Softies. Do you do work crab face? Crab face? I don't like um, fresh crab, I like crab face. No, no, sorry, can't help you there. No. No. We've got pink crab, scallops, lobsters. No, it's crab face I'm after. Ah, well, Um, uh, sorry, can't help you You know, in the little little jars? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you like that? No, I don't like crabs. Well, I don't like crabs, but I like crab paste. Yeah. Because there's lots of new... I notice there's lots of new things coming through, like, is it pesto? And yeah. And Yeah. And things like the crab paste. Yeah, And no. the salmon paste. They're getting shoved to the back, aren't they, at the supermarket? They are. Yeah. I mean, the, the jars are small enough as it is. I mean, I don't like crabs, so I don't eat any of this, but salmon paste is not as good as the real thing. Well, you may be right, you may be wrong. Yeah. You're waiting for my car to appear, aren't you? You're going to be waiting a while. Because the batteries on the walkie-talkie had gone flat and I didn't know I was supposed to come. But it's quite relaxing, isn't it? Just looking at an empty road. Quite a rarity. Come now! Oof, no good shouting, Faye. You need to buy some new batteries for the walkie-talkie. But we couldn't because uh, we'd run out of money. And I think any second, we're going to run out of tape. It's a cruel irony, but just as my car appears, which it will do any second... Oh, yeah, there we go. Watch what happens. Oh, blinking Ken Worthington, the holder of the purse strings who could have provided us with more videotapes, wasn't answering his phone. The production had once more ground to a halt. Some of you may insist that you're happy to stay in the dark. But, you know, that's crazy, because you can achieve that just by shutting your eyes. That's better. How did we film that, then, you may inquire? Well, I had a bit of tape left in my camcorder, and Faye filmed me whilst I bought a tape for her camcorder. With my money, incidentally, I'd cashed in some postal orders that I was saving to buy some laminated shelving uh, from the exchange. And... Oh, I'll tell you later. Just the right one. Yeah, that'll do. Good. Oh, I didn't get a receipt. We finally made contact with our sponsor in a lonely graveyard in St Brillard's Bay. So I'm just talking to Ken. All right. That's 
It's the camera lady. Hey. Tell her to go away. What's going on? Uh, oh. Nothing. Well, I can't talk to anyone. Ken, oh. would you like to speak to Fane? No. Put her in the picture. No, I wouldn't. Ken? <clears throat> Ken? There's no one there. Where's he gone? He has jumped up. Coward. <clears throat> I'm afraid it's just turned into a drama. Uh, it's not a documentary anymore, it's a drama thing. Can yeah. you do dramas? Faye does do dramas. And Tim used to be the sound man for Juliet Bravo. Yeah, so I was in safe hands. Searching for an afro, you may say I'm daft though. Searching for an afro in this town. Searching for an afro, are you having a laugh? No, I believe an afro is to be found in this town. You may have guessed what's happened. Audrey got wind of the fact that Ken was just after her savings and has dumped him and Ken's devastated and has gone into hiding. But we'll find him, don't worry. Searching for an afro, an impresario. Searching for an afro in this town. Searching for an afro, where on earth did he go? I believe an afro is to be found in this town. Are you looking for somebody as well? Oh, you found them. Good. Yeah, I'm looking for, for Ken. The small man with an afro. <laughs> I haven't found that one. No. If you see him, tell him John's looking for him. Right, OK. And the film crew. Watch out, watch out. That was a nasty fall. But I was determined to find Ken. So we carried on. Searching for an afro, an impresario Searching for an afro in this town Searching for an afro, are you having a laugh? No, I believe an afro is to be found In this town Ken's hotel, but no sign of Ken. And Audrey, who asked not to be filmed, said she'd not seen Ken since that morning's nostalgic sing-along. OK, it's going to be an exciting night. <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Someone else has to use their seats after you. Hey, quite a showman, isn't he? And, uh, oh, look at that organ. Much posher than mine. And after a while, Stuart started filming on my camcorder. Hey, it's got a light. Didn't know I had that feature. Stuart looks a bit like Gary Newman, do you not think? Or Erasure. You know, quite futuristic. Fantastic atmosphere, as you can see. So we decided to stick around. And when I saw they had a glitter ball, well, half a glitter ball, I realised this was the perfect venue for my comeback gig. And somehow, I managed to wangle myself onto the bell. John Shuttleworth, all right, is actually at the keyboard as we speak. And, oh look, he's pondering things. John, folks, give John a lovely round of applause. I'll be welcome. Okay. What he's going to do, I have no idea. Need to do a transpose. Yeah, this is a very clever organ. Yeah, I shouldn't have got technical. That was my first mistake. It's not as good as Gary's, obviously. And I was a bit frightened of Gary. He didn't want to leave the stage, did he? And Stuart on my camcorder was distracting. People were looking at him, you know, they weren't listening to me. When I wake up in the morning, I get washed and dressed. My hair is combed and neatly parted, I like to look my best. Is selected from the middle drawer. Then I make my way into the kitchen. Can you guess what for? Oh. To eat my breakfast, yes, but not fried eggs and bacon. If you think I'm a cooked breakfast man, you're very much mistaken. Not even toast and marmalade, for that I have no room. The reason for this will become apparent very soon. 
it's not happening, is it? And Faze tried to make it look more exciting, but it's not. You know. Let's see if we can get them on the chorus. Here we go. I'm a serial serial eater. A serial serial eater. Ooh. That lady uh, is dancing in a chair. Hey. It's happening. Uh, still nobody dancing now. Will they clap? Oof, they didn't. Better do another one. Oof, no. Not impressed, are they? On your feet. Punch the air. Oh, dear. Can I get them with the audience participate? Oh, no. Don't keep asking me. Just happens to be out here. Had a chance to have lived. And uh, well, there's my fan. But this bloke's reaction sums up the general mood. Looks like his budgie's been shot. Clearly hated me. And you can see his eyes are rolling from side to side, which is a sign that he doesn't want to be there. Not comfortable. I mean, that couple in the background, they're not very happy. But uh, they're probably just announced their engagement, you know. It's, and the ultimate humiliation, Gary, has come onto the stage. He's taken the microphone off me. Which was fair enough, because I didn't have a good night, really, did I? If I'm honest with myself. The thing is, my pride had been hurt. I go down better at the British Legion in Sheffield. They like me there. All the frustration of having no money and not being able to find Ken was coming out. Oh, yeah. Quite cheery to see us go, John. It's humiliating. Humiliating, Faye. You know, normally everybody's punching the air. I mean, we're not set the scout up or at the hospice, but indifference to him. Don't like it. Well, I only had myself to blame, for I had become indifferent to the quest. And now I'd become a southern softy myself. It was time to go home. Or was it? I'm not quite sure why Faye's on roller skates. I sense she's a bit of an action girl. Anyway, we'd had a tip-off from Audrey that Ken might have gone to Guernsey and we needed to find him because the crew had not been paid. Not one penny. Uh, Guernsey. Contraplith. Stop filming, you're not allowed to film now. Relax, John. We're making a drama, remember? And, you know, it was quite stylish. That's not her skating, that's the plane. <laughs> I was in quite a good mood, considering I'd just emptied my bank account to pay for the flights. Oof, too fast, surely. Slow down, no, no. We made it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Guernsey. for Ken Worthington, perhaps. With no immediate sightings of Ken's distinctive afro in Guernsey's capital, St Peterport, I was becoming increasingly concerned for his safety. It doesn't mean I couldn't enjoy myself at the fair, though. When you leave the train, please exit to your left. Oh, very well. We need a runner. 
got, got to score. I was going to go on that one, but I don't think I will. I decided instead to have a leisurely stroll and soon discovered this was no ordinary fun fact. Feel a bit better. Good. We had stumbled upon the Battle of Flowers, an annual event both in Jersey and here in Guernsey. As you can see, everyone's enjoying themselves, and who can blame them? Oh, fantastic. Wonderful spectacle. I used to think flowers swaying in the breeze was attractive, but it's much better if they use like this, isn't it? Hello! And it must be said, these conventional displays look tawdry compared to... Oh, golly! Seven feet long, three feet wide, five thousand ashes. But is it seaworthy? I love it. I feel quite emotional. But why are the flowers having a battle? Surely flowers are the ultimate symbol of softness. Unable to solve this conundrum, I left the festival and headed back into town. Oliver Reed used to drink in that pub, apparently. He wanted a southern softy. And Ken Worthington, who is known to enjoy the tipple, well, he likes a mid-morning Malibu, might have gone there to drown his sorrows. We're about to find out. Because I'm about to tell you. Any second now, I think. No, no known sightings of Ken at this stage. Oh! <clears throat> the search continues. It does. Hello. Hello. You've not seen a man with an afro, have you? <laughs> Looking for Ken. Have you not seen? Yeah. Leaving the crew to sunbathe. I went off in search of Ken with my camcorder. Ken, where are you? I don't know, but he wasn't there. Instead, there was a statue of somebody called Victor Hugo. Uh, you might recognise the name. He's done musicals in the past. Well, one famous one. Might have been... Uh, but I couldn't remember the name. Can you? Weren't the Jersey Boys. What was it? Maybe this man knows. Oh. Excuse me, what did... Uh, Oh, you're on the phone, I beg your pardon. He wrote the book for... Wasn't Billy Elliot, was it? Wasn't Billy Elliot. What was he? Um, it was... Um, uh, um, Les Miserables. Les Miserables, that's, that's it. That's right, Les Mis, <laughs> which is a we got big, big, the big thing here. Uh, Les Miserables. Master of the house, master of the hall, getting us in is what we do. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you anyway. On my own. On my own. Yeah. <laughs> Don't leave your bag when you go, will you? Oh. You might be slightly disturbed to learn that this man is a major political figure in Guernsey. And I'm slightly embarrassed to tell you that his name is John. Yeah. Don't know his second name. Probably best that we don't know it. Where do you suggest we look? I could go to a cafe. To he wouldn't tell me in my search for Ken. Excuse me, are there any other islands we can go it to? It became increasingly erratic and incomprehensible. Until eventually, he just clammed up completely and began chain smoking. <laughs> Oof, blimey. Time to leave Guernsey, I think, don't you? Without any help from that politician, I discovered that there were other Channel Islands Ken could have visited. Herm, Sark and Alderney. Why does that pilot keep giving the peace sign? Is he a hippie? Oof, thought we were going to hit that pole. We'd run out of money again, so how did we pay for our flights to the next island? You may wonder why we're in a plane. 
Three flights for all of us to Alderney, the most northerly of the Channel Islands, and therefore perhaps the least soft. Well, we're about to find out. Is it my imagination, or is the plane on the grass? It is. We've landed on somebody's lawn. Notice no words were exchanged between the pilot and the man with the high-vis jacket. Strong, silent types here in Alderney, like Clint Eastwood. The phenomenon of the southern softy required further investigation, but sadly there's not time. As I'm sure you appreciate, the rest of the film must now be taken up with shots like these that show the logo of our sponsor. Hey, Faye, back onto the logo, please. Yep, that's right, they... Um, What's she doing? Show the logo. Well, we can't. The door's in the way. Hey, you, shut that door. Oof, it's coming towards me. Don't seem to realise that we're trying to help the company by showing the logo. Perhaps the next shot will... Um... Oh, no, that's the opposition. That shot shouldn't be there. Don't fly with them. Fly with them. Because uh, they're really good. Blue Mountain. Oof, no, that's a coffee, isn't it? Excuse me, we've only just arrived. Just a bit more to reinforce the message. That's subliminal advertising, isn't it? Oh, well, can I have a cup of tea, please? Would you like a mug? Um, as opposed to a cup yeah. and a saucer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like a mug, please. Can I have a saucer? Would you like milk? No, no, just a mug would be fine. Yes, please. What's the price differential between uh, a mug and a cup? Nothing. So what? I'd advise you to have this. I shall definitely have you'll a, get more. a mug. You'll, you'll get more, won't you? Where else would a, a mug be the same price as a cup? How are we going to get to the town where I'm going to uh, transport? Okay. Okay. I needn't have worried. News of our arrival, plus our flair for promotion in return for freebies, had travelled fast to this tiny island, whose inhabitants had been described as 2,000 alcoholics clinging to a rock. Hello. Hi, John Shuttleworth. Hi there, I'm Joanna Palmer from the State's Volvi Marketing Department. Pleased to meet you. Welcome to Aldi. Here's your press pack. Oh, a press pack. This time we'd clearly landed on our feet. John Shuttleworth, pleased to meet you. Hey, I'm here with your hired car. Hired car? Hired car, yes. How about that then? <laughs> yeah, what, what, what's the name of the. Gordon Fuel Services. Yeah. Get that, Stuart? Yeah. I'll write, write it down. It down. <laughs> You have to get a shot of the Alderney clock while you're here. Alderney clock? One-ish, two-ish, three-ish, four-ish, because that's how we keep our time. I like it. I <laughs> need <laughs> a, a couple of noddies, because you, you, you kept moving around, so I think we should right. do some different Noddy, angles. That's, I didn't know what they were. Right. Plus, it, you know, big ears and that, but it's not. Yeah. It's, you've got to do that. <clears throat> Richard Whiteley used to do it on calendar. That'll do. You can use the same one twice. Don't tell anyone. Looking <laughs> oh. <laughs> <coughs> okay, for some gannets. Where we might be find some, do you know? There's a lot of people here eat like them. <laughs> really? Go to the top there. Yes. Turn left. Yes. Keep walking till you smell them. 
Oof, well, the pung, a little. Just a tad. You don't sound very older than the esk. I'm nearer your neck of the woods. Yeah, sound like you are. Pontefract Way. Leeds. Leeds? Well, not too far out. Not bad. You look a little bit like Ken Worthington, if you don't mind me saying. Do you know Ken? I think I knew his sister, but... No not a sister. Oh, no, it's not him, then. We were looking for him. We don't, I don't think we're bothered anymore, are we? Stuart, do you care? No, it's not all right without him. We're chilling. That's what being here is all about. Yeah. And I think you'll find that you'll develop a certain softness yourself. The elfin light stands on young hill, the roses on both loud and shrill. Stand so proud and he stands so still. Blow winds blow my body out. Blow winds blow my body. If I had the night that stands on young land, my true love, then surely I found. Down to the church, then soon we will be. Who's getting married then? Blimey, that tube train must have been travelling fast to have ended up in Alderney. Or perhaps there's a simpler explanation. And uh, they came over from the mainland in 2001. They're done out in 1920 livery and they were part of the Northern Line Centenary yeah. train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. It does seem strange to uh, be out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, right the, at the end of the northern line. That's right. <laughs> Rather than being surrounded by darkness. Well, there you are, yeah. I've got some more visitors. What? Oh. Who, are, like they, a, who are these people? It's like a film crew. Blimey. They're expecting... Uh, we don't normally, get, don't normally get two at once. I mean, this is, this yeah. is quite strange. I don't know what's going on Hello. here. Hello. Yes? Really? Yes, we are filming here, yes. Why? What, is he from a TV station? Yeah, he's our cameraman from, from Channel TV. Hey, TV coverage. Clearly, we didn't need Ken Worthington now. So, where, where do you want me then? Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we're deeply indebted to Channel TV yeah. for their support. Even though they didn't actually broadcast the interview, it doesn't matter because you can see it now. Okay, Very okay. exciting. James, if you could just if you could just give me a nursery rhyme for a sound level, that'd be great. Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Yeah, that's excellent. All the kings. That's excellent. Thank you, James. You don't know that, sir. <laughs> all, no. all the king's horses and all the king's men uh, couldn't put couldn't put Humpty um, together again. That's the one. What exactly are you doing here? The dog's uh, eating some grass, is that safe? Perhaps he's got a vitamin deficiency in his diet, which is causing him to eat grass, because that'll make some wretch, doesn't it? Sorry, what was the question? Oof, not well, being very professional, was I? But they had taken us rather by surprise. I'm just looking for me Guernsey sweets. Oof, come on, John. Oh, yeah. And to be fair, there were quite a lot of distractions. Oh, is that shed? It's lovely, isn't it? I've got a shed uh, very similar. It's a smaller one. It's uh, I've got a six by four with only two panel window. That's a this is looking at a, 
Eight by six, I don't... No, it's a seven by five, beg your pardon. Can you see what's happened? I've gone on to all the new time. Oof, it stopped. Well, don't surprise me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ken Worthington was living on borrowed time. An entry from his video diary of the time shows Ken to have moved to a less luxurious hotel. Not such a lavish breakfast as before. Oh, pitiful. Quite nice music, though. Hey, what's he up to now? Oh, stealing. Some sachets of hot chocolate. He could have had one of them. And then, the first sign that Ken was beginning to lose his grip on reality. Can. Clearly, the breakup with Audrey had hit him very, very hard. And, um, oh, you know, what's he doing? Well, it's obvious. He's cracking up. Sure up, Ken. And then, during a private moment, Ken began the descent into true madness. No, Ken, it's the auto exposure. Oh, no. But Ken's right, it does look like the moon. Oh. <laughs> We'd come to Sark, full of high cliffs, smugglers' coves, and no cars. and would come to meet this lady, local historian Jennifer Cochran, who knows all about Sark. And that's me, waiting for her in the beautiful La Seigneurie Gardens. Luckily, Jennifer had some flowers to look at before we met... Oh, yeah, because look, fast asleep. It was so hot, you see. But I'm sure any moment now we will meet... Oh, yeah, there I go, to fulfil the assignation. Well, here we are in the um, gardens with a funny name. What they, what they call? La Seigneurie. Yeah. <laughs> that French, I presume? It is. It is French, yes. Though a lot of what you hear on Sark is not French. It's Serquiers. What does that mean? <laughs> it Jasper. means <clears throat> it, uh, the Sark language. I'm going to put my hat on because the heat's getting to Though me. useful for swatting Jaspers, <laughs> it was imperative not I put on my wide-brimmed hat... You've got to protect yourself from the from the sun, particularly on Sark, haven't you? There's yes. a reason for that. Yes, we don't have any pollution, so we get ultraviolet plus. You burn very quickly here. Yeah. So it's a good idea to have protection from sunshine. Should you feel part of the British Isles, stuck out here? The British Isles are, after all, um, a colony of the Channel Islands. This is William the Conqueror's homeland. And William the Conqueror came and conquered England. What, and he came from Sark? He came from Normandy, and we were part of Normandy then. Oh, I see, yes. And this is all that is left to the crown of Normandy. But if the southerners are soft, how come we're not Norwegian, or Dutch from the Dutch invasion, or Spanish from the Spanish invasion, or French from the French invasion, or German from the last invasion, the last attempted invasion? The southerners have been a line of defence for the British Isles for a very, very long time, like a thousand years. Yeah, I suppose they have been. If not longer. Yeah. <laughs> well, nothing soft about the southerners. No. Mmm, she's tasty. Mm. Oh, Cuban nails. The peace and tranquility of the gardens had been shattered by an intruder. Oh, no, I'm afraid there are no prizes well, for guessing their well, identity. People are eating. Can? I thought I saw an asteroid. It can't be Ken, can it? We, we, we're thinking Ken Worthington might be on the island. Do you know Ken? I don't. Do you remember New Faces? 
in 73. Uh, you know what Tony Hatch? Not really. No. Um, <laughs> well, anyway. Ken? Is it Ken? But there was no sign of the Afro. So we resumed our fascinating conversation about Sark's prison. The jail, is it, uh, is it being well pointed? Uh, can they, could you do like a Steve McQueen? And, you know, uh, no, escape? you couldn't. It's a very well built jail because it's granite. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm just going to have to go because I must go down to the country market, oh. um, which is on today. Right. So, uh, well, nice to have met you. Yes, I knew it was And uh, I hope that the rest of your trip is successful. Yeah. Bye. But, do they sell chutney? Oh, yes, they do sell chutney. Right. Oh, may. Oh, well, we might nip there ourselves and get some chutney. And on an island where cars are banned, what's the best way to get to market? And we've even got one of the trailer for you. Thank you. Wow. Come on, Stuart, load it up. But uh, in return, obviously, we'll show you your logo. Yep, the customary name check. Yeah. In this case, have a new cycles of Sark. It's been a very busy day, honestly I've not stopped Rushing around, I've not sat down and now I'm ready to drop It's been a very busy day, I've barely had a chance to shave I've lost count of the number of times I've reheated my tea in the microwave Sat down and now I'm ready to drop It's been a very busy day I barely had a chance to shave I've lost count of the number of times I've reheated my tea in the microwave We never did make it to the country market Maybe you should walk a bit, John I'm all right, don't worry, love, I'm all right. But I wasn't all right, and I blame it on the ultraviolet plus. Oh. Yes, I'm fine. That's Caused by a worrying lack of pollution. Come on, keep up. You know, I don't want to do something about that. Everything else on Sark is fine. But that... Oh, get your T-shirt on, lad. To make matters worse, our run of good luck was about to come to an abrupt end. Hello. Hi. It's uh, John Shuttleworth here. We're, we're making a film on the island. You've probably seen Please us around with our, with our camera, have you? I have indeed, yeah? yes. Yes, pleased to meet you. And uh, well, I wonder if we could get free B&B accommodation for five nights for, for the four of us. Would that be possible, courtesy of Sark Tourism? In the middle of the season? You must be joking. <laughs> right. No, it's, um, no, I'm afraid we couldn't do that. I see. Well... Thanks for your help so far. It's, <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah, you shouldn't laugh because, you know, we, we don't know where we're going to sleep tonight now. Oh, so the campsites are full, aren't they? <clears throat> no. They didn't buy it. What's his name? Monette. Monette. Thank you. Monette. <laughs> As in the painter. Having failed to secure a stable for the night, I had one last try at the visitor centre, offering 100% of the film's profits in return for a tent and somewhere to pitch it. No. Not interested. <clears throat> Got to look for a, a soft hedge. Well, heather. you can sleep in the soft hedge. Can you use heather? <laughs> they always used heather in the famous five. Just make sure you don't put any good Hang on, comes Chuck. Lady Luck had given us a reprieve, for I'd found a cheque from Ken Worthington 
that I'd been carrying around with me for ages. It was for £80. Uh, I'd like to say it was for uh, performing at the drop-in centre, but it wasn't. It was for wallpaper in two rooms in Ken's bungalow. £40 a room. I'm quite good at wallpaper and polyfilling. It's going to take a few days to clear. Uh-huh. <coughs> yeah, unless we find a branch of Barclays. Well, I don't think there is one on Sark. He said something about a Barclays on a nearby island. Uh-huh. Um, we could go there. Yeah, should we check that out? Yeah. Right, well, we need to get a boat, won't we? That's um, going to cost money as well, It is going to cost. Yeah. Well, let's, let's be optimistic, Tim. We can do it. Yeah, we can, yeah. Is it this way to the harbour? Is it that way? Oh, thank you. <laughs> But the ship's dock was merely informing us of our arrival at the most luxurious branch of any bank I had ever seen. There it is. Very lavish branch of Barclays, wouldn't you say? Oh, I hope they're not passing on the running costs directly to the customer. Everyone will be in the red. But our hopes of becoming solvent were dashed by Skipper Andy Lehman's shock revelation. Oh, it's not, it's not a branch of Barclays, it's, um... No? It's a bunch of Barclays. What do you mean? It's the, um, it's the home of the Barclay Brothers. Oh. It's their little castle. <coughs> it's not a bank, then? No, it's not a bank. You can't cash Ken's cheque. Oh, we've been jewelled. We had, and conditions at sea were worsening. Oof, look at that. Perilous. It's John, John, we're really low on tech. Well, that's your problem. Well, actually, I don't care, because I've had enough. Well, is there anything you want to say to her around it up? Or? Uh, well, uh, yes, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching. Uh, and I hope that you now, well, we don't really know the answer, do we? Have we, have we solved the quest? The, feel sick. <laughs> we all felt sick. It was a miserable end to what was a silly quest. You know, Ken was right. Look at poor Stuart. Oof, he's in a bad way. And I wasn't happy about giving this bloke a plug because he'd made us all seasick. But he did give us a very good rate, so I'm obliged to plug his website. The search for the Southern Softies had been long and arduous. And did we even find any? Well, that lass, despite wearing pink, displayed brutish behaviour. And this lass displayed criminal behaviour. I didn't notice at the time, but she stole a strawberry. Look, it's got in her mouth. Yep, the parents have been informed. Well, we all have a good side and a bad side. Yeah. And perhaps we all have a hard side and a soft side. Even Martin Parr, who repaired my spectacles. Well, I'll, I'll go then. Yeah. And you didn't need to. Look what's across the road. I didn't see that at the time. And some of us are just soft in the head. Yeah. Oof, it was mad. But not as mad as Ken Worthington, filming here the final of his video diary entries. I was filming too, can you see? Don't know why, because we'd run out of tape. As you know, oh, oh fantastic. That's Faye doing a scuba dive, and Ken caught it on camera. Well, she's a sporty lass, I'll warrant. Just had a brilliant idea. If, if I take the cling film off the sandwich, um, I'll have that later, and wrap it round the lens of my camcorder, like so, hey, hey, I've got myself a waterproof camera. Really, Ken? How fascinating. Oh, he's going to go in, and he can't even swim. Oh, oh I'm going to go and get some close-ups of that young lady and ask her to join my stable. Who knows? We could end up having a skinny dip together. Hmm. Oh, it's cold. Oh. This is awful. We're about to witness a man drowning. And it's a shame, because Ken's been my next door neighbour and so lazy for a number of years. I'm going to miss you, you know.
Goodbye, friends. This is how it ends with Ken and his camcorder. Believing cling, film could bring protection from the water. Ken is from Sheffield, so must be Northern Jesse, not a Southern softy. I still don't want him to drown. I'll have to find a new soul agent. Hang on, you're still alive. To phase amazement. Hey, it's an happy ending. Oof, what is it? No. Faye's stolen Kent's camp coat. He's going off for a swim, leaving Kent to drown. Unless he's grabbed hold of one of her flippers. What's that? <gasps> 